Are you in the process of divorcing a narcissist and you want to know how the narcissist weaponizes the court system or even if they do? By the end of this video, you're going to know all about how narcissists use the court system as a sword in a divorce. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung. I'm actually a top 1% divorce attorney and the best selling author of the books Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free a Step by Step Divorce Guide. And I've helped thousands of people in their divorces as clients go from lives of drama, trauma, chaos to go all the way to the other side to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And I do the same thing for you right here in these videos. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content and when I go live, by the way, as well. You're getting ready to divorce a narcissist. Maybe you're in the process of divorcing a narcissist and you're scared to death that the narcissist is going to use the court system as a sword. Or what does that even mean that they use the court system as a sword? When they go to divorce, they are now in what we call the discard phase. And if you want to know about the three different phases of a narcissistic relationship, which is love bomb, devalue, and discard, check out my videos on love bombing, devaluing, and discarding. But once you get into the discard phase, it's really the birth of the smear campaign. They can start this process months and months and months before the divorce it has even been filed. You know, they just start dropping these little breadcrumbs around to their flying monkeys or to the other people that they want to line up to be on their side because they, they're just starting to plant these little seeds that there's something wrong with you. So for example, they'll say, um, you know, Mary had a little too much to drink at the party. And, and they say that like six months before the divorce was even filed because they're kind of starting to see the writing on the wall. And so they just start to say these little things like, oh, I'm just, I'm kind of worried about her. You know, they, they put it in this terms of, oh, I'm so worried um, about that person. And then boom, once the divorce starts, they, are now suddenly asking for sole custody or supervised time sharing or they want a custody evaluation something like that and it's like the craziest thing you know for so i have a situation like that right now with one of my clients he um my client is the husband and the two of them have they are in the same exact profession and they even own the business together they have three children together. They have shared custody. I mean, you know, even when they were still married, they shared responsibilities. Both of them were, were taking the children to various sports events. Both of them were, were making dinner for the children. Both of them were helping with homework. Both of them were equally involved in the children's lives. So I crazily thought, oh, we'll start this case and it'll be no problem. Since they're in the same profession, we're just going to be drafting a marital settlement agreement. I'm sure they'll, it'll just be 50-50 custody. There won't be any alimony issues. But no, she goes and hires a lawyer that likes to help people use the court system as a sword and weaponize the court system. And suddenly, the, the woman, um, the, the wife, filed a motion for a custody evaluation, and now all of a sudden she's withholding timesharing from my client. All of a sudden, when the case starts, he's a terrible parent. He beats the children. He does all of these things. When, meanwhile, right up until the day that she filed the petition, they were sharing all the responsibilities for the child. But now here she is using the court system as her sword, weaponizing the court system to gain leverage over my client to show that she's the one in control, to show that she's the one with the power, to show that she's the one that can make him squirm. Because remember, narcissists need an endless amount of supply. Supply is their 
their food source, their oxygen, it's what they live on. So they get supply from jerking people around. It sounds like the craziest thing. When you're going to try to resolve a case, a divorce case or any kind of issue, any kind of dispute with a narcissist, and you are a reasonable person, you are not on the same page because that narcissist is not looking for an ending of the situation. The narcissist is looking for a way to continue to jerk you around. So while you're going, well, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why are we throwing all this money at this situation? Well, the reason why is because they are enjoying the process. They'll tell you that they aren't. They'll tell you it's your fault that it's taking so long. They'll tell you that you are the reason that they had to do all these things because they had to save their children by asking for sole custody or save their children for asking for supervised time sharing. But that's not what they really want to do. What they really want to do is jerk you around. I've actually had clients where they were the ones who were the narcissist tell me, I'd rather pay you than her. I'd rather keep the lawyer working and doing things to make the other person miserable than to actually resolve the case. It sounds crazy, but it's not crazy when you know what the motivation is behind it. And if you don't want this to happen to you, I want to see an I'm fighting back in the comments. If you are dealing with this and you're seeing this narcissist using the court system as a sword, or you think that you're, they're going to be using the court system as a sword, there's only one way to get back at this. And, and that is to shift the dynamic, turn the tables, because you're going to feel like you're being pelleted with ammunition all over the place. They're going to use every single thing they can in their arsenal to make your life as miserable as possible. So you're just going to be sitting there defending, defending, defending. It's like you're trying to get yourself out of a paper bag. So you only, the only thing you can do is use my slay method, which of course I have a whole course on slay your negotiation with an RSS, but understand that slay stands for strategy, leverage, anticipating what the narcissist is going to do and focusing on you and your case. And that's the only way you're going to do it. And you need to go on the offensive and maybe even use the court system as your own sword, but in a way that ethically manipulates the manipulator in a way that makes them think that you are potentially going to be interrupting their source of supply so that they feel threatened because the only way that you're going to get them to stop using the court system as their weapon, as their sword to make you uh, crazy and, and use it as a form of getting supply for themselves is by fighting back, is by going on the offensive, is by threatening their source of supply, by saying, okay, potentially you're going to look bad if you do this, that, or the other thing. Um, creating leverage against them. You know, inside my course, I give like 30 different examples of leverage because that's like so important. I also have a whole video on it. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check out my video on how to create leverage and what is leverage when you're dealing with a narcissist. And we'll drop a link to that below as well. The main thing that you need to remember is they will use the court system as their sword, as a weapon, as a means to make you crazy. Just expect it. Don't be surprised when they do that. But you need to have a plan, a plan of attack, a plan to fight back, a plan that has you controlling the process instead of them. If you're getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist, come on over, grab my free Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet. It's helped thousands of people, including Sarah, who said that it definitely works. So why not use it? It's totally free. Just go to winmynegotiation.com or drop, um, we'll drop a link below and you can grab it in the comments. If you want to join my free private Facebook group, 
it's called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zong. Just go ahead and, and hit the link below and answer a couple of little questions so that we just know that you are actually dealing with a narcissist and that you are going to help support others who are dealing with narcissists. If you like this video, give me a like, give me a share, drop me a comment. Let me know that you were here. I'm so glad that you were here. I'm Rebecca Zong. Remember, today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'll see you in the next video. Oh,